I'm here to talk about the Dreaming New Mexico project. The Dreaming New Mexico project came really out of the turbulence and the kind of disruption that we're f and dysfunctionality we're feeling in the bureaucracy of the world. It came out of feeling that we needed a refuge, a place of sanctuary, a protected space, in order to remind ourselves what was the imagination, what was the inspiration, what was the desire that led us into the usual frying pans that we've been fighting in for years. It was a place that says, when we got into all that, we kind of got so busy with the workaday world that we forgot why we were ever doing it. So it was a place of sanctuary, a place to th remind ourselves, what do we really deeply desire? And if we had success, what would success actually look like? And so the Dreaming New Mexico project then started to look at various things in the world. I worked in Ethiopia in the hunger camps during the 80s and 90s, and right now 10,000 people a day are walking into refugee camps in Somalia. They're incredibly silent with little kids walking around looking for dead parents with no food, just staggering about. So we understood that access to food was the basic desire that all human beings had. Access to food and access to enough food. And at the same time, we noticed that in some countries, there was too much food or the wrong kind of food. And so we were looking and said, well, part of the dream is not only access, but nutritious food, good tasting food, the right food. New Mexico now is in the bottom three of poverty in the whole United States. Over 20% of the children have cardiovascular or diabetes too, related to too much trans fats and too much sugars. So out of that came the second part of our dream. But inside that dream, we also noticed like this year in New Mexico, where there was a late freeze, an unnatural freeze. There were fires that stopped, the fires immediately stopped the biofuel stream. There was a huge dream for biofuels energy. It now has to go back to the drawing boards because of the fires. The apple industry this year has been hit by both the freeze and then by floods. So it was the volatility of climate and how it changes food prices, how it makes erratic food delivery systems. And we, ha we understood that we had to have a dream that had a conservation economy in it, a, an economy that took care of the natural capital of the soils of, of New Mexico. And then when talking to people, we found that the food they ate, they wanted to know, felt good to them. What was the morality of the economy? In New Mexico, there's one big Tyson's food. There's also a pretty iffy veal industry for calves, for killing calves. People didn't want to eat that meat. They didn't want to eat those chickens. They wanted, a, as well as a conservation economy, the dream was a moral economy. So we also understood that it wasn't just bodily energy that people wanted. They wanted the energy that was in their lives for driving, for cooling, for heating, to be part of the moral and the conservation economy. This is San Juan County. The red dots you see are all either natural gas wells or coal bed methane wells. They all leak, especially with fracking. The people who live there are also subjected to mercury out from the coal-fired power plants. Uh, the EPA has just set up the first rules about these wells, which outgas a kind of volatile organic that causes cancer. So people wanted to know that all their energy was safe, as well as the food energy they ate. So we decided we would make the dreams. We would look 20 years ahead and say, what is your dream? What is it you desire? What would success look like? And the first thing we decided to do was take the legacy of art of the Southwest in New Mexico and make beautiful posters of those dreams. Those posters now appear in government agency offices, in school rooms. They just sit there and people can look at it and say, okay, we can change the story. The story of the next 20 years can be a story with a beautiful dream in it. What we also noticed is people wanted to know, well, what's the plot? How does that story, how does the dream turn into a story? And so we made what you might call a full spectrum sustainability atlas. The first atlas that any state has done, which maps, not just of the past, but looked at maps of how you could go into the future 
for energy and food. We put it all in a little pamphlet, and inside that pamphlet, we circled and made the red circle here, the dream. We also put in the maps, and we talked about in the, in the narrative what the state of our state is. In talking to people, what we asked them, well, what's of interest? And everybody says, well, we want to be local. We want to be local. But some people thought of the Earth as a local place in the universe. Others thought about local as being the whole Southwest. Others thought of local as being the things they were growing at, on their windowsill. So what was local? We decided there's no need to fight. Everybody has a sense of the local. And we noticed that everybody, we were usually drinking coffee or tea while we were doing it, everybody was in the middle of a global local act because the coffee will never be grown in New Mexico. The tea will never be grown in New Mexico. The rice will never be grown in New Mexico. So that we couldn't just have a local food shed. We had to have a local food shed and a fair trade state. We had to really understand how trade entered in and what these levels of different local meant. And so we did start. We started with first the lo most local, local sense of geography, which were the urban food sheds. And the first thing we noticed is that there were blank spaces. And in those blank spaces, people wanted to grow gardens. So we put out this idea of a Zia garden, which took on the legacy of New Mexico, what the sun looked like, and turned it into a nutritional, accessible, affordable food garden. And that uh, the San Francisco State College is thinking of building in the next two years, using water that runs off their roofs. At the same time, we noticed that actually New Mexico was already on their way. They just needed to know that they were inside a wonderful story. And that's Albuquerque, for instance, was the, one of three cities in the whole United States to pass a bond issue that bought farmland in the city to keep it as farmland. And that farmland now produces food for a farmer's market. It has a wildlife sanctuary for the sandhill cranes, and it has a recreational education area. So there already was the desire there, and the desire just now fed in to the stream. We also noticed that there were urban energy sheds. And if San Diego has shown us anything, it has shown us that the best way to get energy is just to put it on your roof. And in putting it on your roof, then when the transmission lines go down, at least during the day, pe people who are on oxygen will have their oxygen machines. The hotels have electronic keys now, will be able to open your door. And so we said, okay, the dream is self-generate as much power as you can and earn the income from that power. And that will accomplish the energy security dream the dream that energy can be more reliable and can come right from the responsibility of your own roof. And so in the next couple of years, our dream is to work with Google and map the whole of Albuquerque and where the shadows are and where, what the orientation of buildings are and figure out how many megawatts the actual urban area can ac actually produce and how to do it with microgrids. So. But the main thing that we learned is that everybody wanted to know where their food came from. Where does our food come? Where does our energy come from? And so we mapped for the first time what we call the agro-ecoregions of New Mexico. These are not like the pristine habitats that conservation is looking at. These are habitats that people have used mostly for 2,000 years in New Mexico. Some of them have been hunted and gathered for 10,000 years. So we found that there were six really distinct agro regions. that New Mexico actually was a combination of different kinds of earth, different kinds of watering and irrigation, different kinds of climate. And that when people understood that, they understood many things. One of the things they understood is that the word shifted from local to locale appropriate. I can grow apples here. I can grow pecans in the lower Rio Grande. I can grow onions in the lower Rio Grande and a different kind of onion up on the Navajo reservation. So the word became locale appropriate and became a real part of understanding what we meant by our agro regions and our local food sheds. 
And then people began to understand that there were seasons and that we would not, because we're a very arid land, be able to produce all the food we wanted to eat. So we did a study and found out that New Mexico could produce 20% of all the food it wants to eat. Right now it produces only 2% of all the food that's eaten in the state. And the other 80% will have to come from trade. And that's why, again, we talk about fair trade. So we looked at all the seasonal cycles. And when we looked at the seasonal cycles, we found that in some places, by starting your plants early in greenhouses or even keeping them growing in greenhouses during the winter, we could extend the season. And by looking at each agro region and what it produced, we decided the dream for 2020 is 50% of all the crops that are grown in New Mexico will feed, 50, will feed New Mexico in any one year during the height of our season from June to September. And so we set that out as our dream. In looking at all that, again, here is a picture of uh, New Mexico and what its major crops are right now. We understood that distribution was as important as production. And how are we going to distribute all this between all these different places? There, is no dis there was no distribution system in New Mexico. Everything was coming in from flying in flowers from Colombia, you know, chilies from Ethiopia. Where, where were we going to do it? In fact, you might have seen it, but there's now a salsa in Albertsons that's made in China. Yeah. So what is this going to... How do we get down there? And in looking at the agro regions, we decided that the best way to do it was through agro regional hubs. So we looked at where would be the best hub in each agro region, so farmers didn't have to do tons of food miles taking their trucking all the way to Albuquerque. They could just drop it off and there would be a place there to process the food, to cold storage it, maybe even to freeze it, and then to distribute it from there. And we found, once again, the dream had started many years ago. We have in New Mexico one of the best co-ops, I'd say, that in the top three co-ops in the whole country with La Montanita. And what... Yeah. <laughs> And La Montanita has already begun, along with Farm to Table and Bali, to set up these agro regional hubs. So we said, what's that dream look like? And everyone dumped on us all their dreams. And the agro regional hub became a place where you could have a locavore restaurant, a locavore grocery, where you could teach kids in 4-H clubs. You could even have a startup farm. We're talking to the state land office about perhaps getting a startup farm with each agro regional hub so that when someone gets out of agricultural school and they can't afford to buy a farm, they could try it out for three years, earn enough money to put their down payment. We were, we were looking at all kinds of things like where could the agro regional hub sell the solar and uh, power to run pumps and things like that. So our dream then also was not just in food energy. We looked at the regular energy, well, we usually call energy, in the state, and we mapped out where the best solar areas were, where the best wind areas were, where the best geothermal areas were. And when we did that, suddenly the dreams plot, the story thickened, and we suddenly understood that mayors who live in the geothermal belt could do all of this. They could grow fish with the geothermal water. They could have greenhouses. Right now, you may not know, but New Mexico has more heated greenhouses in acreage than any other state in the country. And when you buy a poinsettia in New York or, you, or in Tallahassee, that poinsettia was probably grown in New Mexico. New Mexico in Christmas time provides almost all the poinsettias grown in the United States. So, so right now, why not then again see if we can localize that? start growing some of our organic food so that rather than all the food coming from the Yaqui Valley in Mexico, which is really not that far, uh, we could also have our own organic food grown through geothermal. And, that each, but the, and so we had a new dream of governance that mayors and councils would come together and they would look at their uh, area and they would diversify their economy using the geothermal as the basis. We also saw that because New Mexico, by the way, uh, exports 95% of its energy, 
and almost 95% of all the greenhouse gases it produces comes from this export of energy to outside. But we first said, let's look in-state. What could we do if we took the best solar areas and the best wind areas? And we found out that the grid was not ready for that. The grid is all in oil, gas, coal. And so we understood that we have to watch that one. Don't let them build a grid that goes by a coal field. Let them build a grid that goes through a wind field. And so the green lines up on there are the green grid. What would happen if we only used renewables? And we put that out there, and that map is changing the story about how New Mexico looks at its future in renewables. So I said, what's the big dream? The big dream is that every state or every area would make one of these agroecoregional maps. And by 2030, the Farm Bill will be framed. Its story will be done by agroecoregions with commodity crops now equal to what they call specialty crops, you know, the things we actually eat, not the grains. So we ha have this dream that could be then moved off in its own way and custom designed all of the United States. The same thing with renewables. California is saying we only want 20% of our line must have renewable energy. Well, New Mexico then, and we're going to be working with Google and the Navajo Nation to map out how they could transition from the Four Corners, San Juan, heavily polluting coal-fired power plants and find the best wind and solar places so that the jobs that are generated by coal can now be switched to renewables. So <laughs> the big dream also for 30 years is how to change trade. Of course, all of you involved with WTL and all that know how difficult it is, and it's very hard to do, so I'm not going to talk about it today. But it's important for us to understand that the moral economy says, receive from others what you would sell or give to them. And so we're going to try to work to see how the states can actually find sister states or sister areas for things they have to import where they can't do import substitution so that we can be sure that the people there are, are being treated as equitable as the people here. The second big idea in, has been value chains. I have to do this very fast. Um, value chains show all the steps from inputs to the end of production. In doing that, the value chain shows that where the weaknesses are that we need to take care of. So in Velarde in northern New Mexico, what they noticed is that all the apple farmers couldn't produce apples for the school system because the apples needed to be polished, they needed to be washed in a particular manner. They can only be an inch and a quarter in diameter because if they're bigger, kids throw them out. If they're littler, kids don't eat them. So all the New Mexico Department of Economic Development got together and they just bought a sorter and a washer for the co-op of apple growers. And overnight, all of those apples of the right size and polish went to the school system and a local economy was developed. Well, so he, here again, we see that what you, sometimes there's a need for an infrastructure to be changed on the value change. Pecans, five million tons of pecans are sent to China every year. Chinese love New Mexican pecans because they have softer shells and you can break them in chat as you're talking. But we also know that organic pecan trees grow more pecans than non-organic, and they also receive a higher price. So why isn't New Mexico going organic? Well, again, we looked at the value chain, and the first thing we found was that the pecans, there was no organic fertilizer in New Mexico. But we had this huge dairy industry, but we had no social entrepreneur that was willing to take and the risk of making a huge amount of organic manure into fertilizer and so that the pecan industry could change. We also found later that the shellers were all moving to Mexico and shellers wanted a particular volume of organic uh, pecans and so that they wouldn't get mixed up and we didn't have that level. So again, the value chain is not only a story of the dream, but a story of where the story needs to be improved. So finally, I'm, I can't go through all these dreams. Uh, we had another dream of eco-services, where farmers and ranchers who do 
You know, they wear a T-shirt that says every day is Earth Day on the ranch. And, and, you know, they do things and they take care. Of, there are many ranchers in New Mexico. One rancher is trying to figure out how to do herd management with wolves. Another rancher down in Hildago County is saving the last of a subspecies of pronghorn antelope. There, there are a lot of people who volunteer and do it because they feel a moral economy. But so many ranchers need to also make some money. And so um, Dreaming New Mexico is trying to develop an MBA course of portfolio management, where the MBA would go to the ranch and say, look, I know you have no time to do all this paperwork, but let's see which grants which from the federal government, which money is available, and I'll do all the paperwork so that you can go ahead and help the earth and keep the natural capital. So that's what we're, we're, one of our dreams right now is to create a new program for a portfolio management for ECHO services. The, I want to end by simply saying that what we want out of this turbulence and dysfunction is a new vision, a new dream of coherence and integrity. And that comes right out of New Mexico's old legacy of peaky bread, which no one except New Mexicans really know what it is, of blue corn, of yellow watermelons, of all kinds of churro sheep, of what is really the deep legacy of agriculture and food in this state. And when we look at that, we see the dream of what the future is. We see that it is a dream that's going to be a new story. You know, maybe Coyote on Tuesday will read the, new, read the Wall Street Journal and decide what the price of calves are and sell them to Roadrunner. I mean, it'll be a new story. And we also know that this new dream is going to be with people. We can Twitter and we can blog and we can Facebook, but basically it has to be action with people because the life is with people and with the earth, the water, the fire of the planet and, and the state. And so as an old folk, let me just say what we used to say when I was young. Uh, if you don't like the news, go out and make some of your own. Thank you.